It's Vanessa Paisley. How are you doing? Oh, hi. Hi, Matthew. How are you? I am all right. Living in crazy times. What's happening in the house? OK, so we've got things going on in, on every floor. I think I've got my son sitting an exam on the first floor at uni. Um, I've got my partner's doing his working and my daughter should have been doing two A-levels today. But she's sitting in the garden and looks quite happy <laughs> at the moment. Yeah, but it was a bit of a it was a bit of a trauma having your last day of school thrown on you. Yeah. you know with yeah. 24 hours to go she was absolutely heartbroken um but they put together a leavers video the girly trip to zante has been cancelled it's probably a good thing <laughs> um, <laughs> but no she though but that's really what's going on here it's a very different summer to the one we had planned but let's it's all about you vanessa it's all about you what was old world Vanessa Paisley's routine? What were the elements that made up your life then? Okay, so it was a mixture of things. I mean, there were lots of foreign trips, lots of trips to India, trips to Russia, the Netherlands, Austria, Switzerland. Um, and there were the awful commutes into London, <laughs> which went on for ages and ages ages and they were the trains were always late um but so I miss but I am missing you know being in London being in a city I'm in a small town north of London um so but most of it was face-to-face -face training and now I'm doing a lot of virtual work no I understand so we've all had this the face-to-face -face, the classroom is gone and then the transition and let's be rude now but as we were talking about this before what was our view of the advantage of the classroom and what was our view of virtual? Confession time, people. <laughs> yeah, so I was not really into doing any Skype training. I'd like to say, oh, it's not the same. You know, you can't get to know someone. You can't build up trust. You can't go and have a nice lunch with someone. You know, <laughs> often I was training with people in Holland Park. We'd be going to the park and having a coffee. And I, I really was quite against... Um, Skype training or any kind of virtual training and also sometimes I was chasing people for training at times because they were in different time zones and you'd be like you know when are we going to coordinate our, our schedules but yeah so I wasn't I wasn't really a fan of it to be quite honest. But let's talk about the opportunity because you went through some stuff with some Austrian schools what was the old world of that because there was amazing projects you we, we were doing that. Yeah, so um, basically I work on these um, cross-cultural exchange programs called Explore India and Explore Russia. Um, so we were supposed to be going to um, Russia in September with a group of, I think, about 35 students from the Dach countries, Germany, Austria, Switzerland. Um, and then basically we prepare uh, the students for this trip. They come up with a project idea comparing two things, whether it would be education systems, standard of living, um, attitudes towards education, um, all these kind of things where they would then look at intercultural theories at home. And when, when they got to Russia, they would then work on these projects in groups with Russian students. So you can imagine, we were, I was supposed to be in Austria last month preparing students for this trip. And then it, the, the, the university shut down, I think, middle of March. Yeah. And they went, what do we do? And were you finding a reaction from the schools? Because I experienced something a little bit similar. Were they ready for this? Were they agile? I think maybe with some of the um, courses, they were more agile. Yeah, so yeah, whether it yeah. was like logistics, um, lectures, putting those online, that was OK. But things with a, you know, like a live field trip, <laughs> intercultural learning beyond the textbook. Yeah when you're then you have to go back to the textbook that seemed like quite a challenge so there were lots of learning platforms in place we had things like um it was called the learning management system ms teams was even there but nobody was using it so actually when everyone went oh my god what are we going to do i said no nope, we've just got to get on with it took a pragmatic approach 
but I thought we, we can't be perfect. We've just got to see what we can come up with. Yeah. So we came up with another program, which I think the students are enjoying, but obviously it's not the same as going to Russia. No, it's it's rather heartbreaking. Isn't it? So let's just go back to the, the demographics. So who were the DAX people? What sort of background? Or what? And they have a fairly unique setup as well of how they study and so forth. Yeah. So it's basically a University of Applied Sciences, which are quite, you know, well known in Austria and in other countries like the Netherlands, Germany. But they basically they're part time students who are studying business administration and industrial engineering. And because they can't go on a semester abroad, like a Erasmus semester, um, we introduced a program whereby they have to take part in one of these trips, um, explore India or Russia. So they work full time, um, and then on a Friday and Saturday they study. Um, and then the one the students in Russia are very different; they're much younger. Yeah. yeah. Um, we, we work with a uh, university called Chelyabinsk State University um, and they, the students there are younger, they are yeah. mainly female because they're linguists, you know, okay. sorry to say it's a stereotype, but <laughs> language students are very often women. Um, and they, so it's when we get there, it's usually a, a nice mix of students from different fields but different age groups um working together to try and understand the different cultures and studying in those two different cultures it sounds amazing and and totally respect i'm, I'm working for a similar school myself they're wonderful people and it's a bit like working your way through college in america or germany or other places where the income is important and these guys I mean, they're exhausted in the day and then they study at the weekends, they study at the, in the evenings. They're absolute heroes and heroines. So obviously the field trip, everyone's thinking, well, how the hell can you transform a field trip into something else? So obviously it's changed, it's morphed into something else. So what's it now morphed into? OK, so we won't we won't be going to um, Russia in September. So um, we've it's turned into a bit of a monocultural, yeah. intercultural awareness course but so we decided that the um, students could look at how the different cultures around the world have reacted to the COVID-19 pand pandemic um, from a cultural perspective so intercultural theories whether it's Trompenas, Hofstede, Edward Hall, Erin Meyer, all these different theories we look at in the virtual classroom and they apply the country's reactions to COVID to the theory, or they apply the theories to the, the what's happening now. Of course, it's difficult because most of the material we're looking at are newspaper articles and how are they getting hold of them? And it, But it's an interesting di topic because I think every country is reporting on it in a different way. Yeah. And I think yeah. at some point it was like turning into a competition who could deal with it the best. Um, and it probably still is that competition, but you know, I think it's a it's a it's a way that they realise that ah, oh, there are. It's not just because the British are being arrogant or yeah, exceptionally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's actually because the British like winging it. Um, <laughs> the British are good at finding solutions as they go along, whereas some of their countries are much better in the planning. Yeah. Yeah, Sorry, so I hope I've not said anything stereotypical. Yes, there. exactly. Apologies to anyone who is a yes diversity policewoman. Very good. Now it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. Now, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. When life gives you COVID, then study it from an intercultural perspective. <laughs> yeah, and I, I love it. You're doing an X-ray of of where have the values given us these behaviours? That's the inner origins. And then, of course, there's the other side, which is the perception of, say, news coverage. It's going through the filter, the fairly dodgy filter of media, which I think is a whole new study anyway. So that's fascinating. And then you can talk about, you know, truth and freedom and, and all sorts of stuff. Yeah. And I think it just it helps people to understand. So yeah. and that is the goal, obviously, because intercultural awareness without actually going through culture shock or visiting another yeah. culture is very difficult it's like learning to swim without water isn't it but this actually i think because it's real um they can probably get their, their teeth stuck into it now you're reminding me that there was a seminar called uh, or no there was a book called no one ever learned to ride a bicycle at a seminar and i'm thinking okay. well, 
you probably could get some bikes in a room in the old days, but they're, they're, it's a, it's a nice <laughs> idea. No, I love it, and 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 big ups to you, Vanessa. You've really taken what you've got the zeitgeist you've taken the the resources we have now and made something valuable out of it which is sort of a metaphor for the times the times we're in so before we sum up and give a sort of uh, a, a bit of wisdom or a reflection for the viewers so russia this year on paper what's next year for those wonderful students yeah so when um, we would be going to india in uh, February 2021. So obviously in education, you're planning, planning far ahead. So at the moment we're thinking we're going to include um, our Indian students from our institution in New Delhi earlier on in the process, which we can do this time. We couldn't do that last time because it was, we had to be really quick and come up with a new idea um, spontaneously or not spontaneously, but yeah. it, just had to be pragmatic, a pragmatic solution. This one's got more planning this time. So we will be um, linking the students up earlier in the process so that they yeah, can get yeah. to know each other online. We can do a lot of the, the um, parts of the, the field trip. We can actually do online before we get there so that when the students come together, if they come together in February, they can actually get on with their projects straight away um, and if it doesn't happen, then yeah, we will yeah. be putting the field trip online next February and we will be integrating things like cooking together. So you need to, we're cooking butter chicken. You need this, this, this and this. Go and find it. And I don't know how the Indians are going to find all these Austrian cheeses <laughs> or, things to, or sausage. Yes, and, uh, wild we're garlic. Yeah, and then we're going to, you know, try and make it like a lively exchange program, even though it's online. So Amazing. it's not just going to be writing essays. It's not just being doing this um, multiple choice exam, which yeah. seems to be the trend at the moment. Yeah, yeah in, in education. Yeah. Um, I think we have to learn from this experience that the technology is there. Yeah, 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 and yeah. why haven't we been using it? Bingo. Okay. Bingo. Exactly. These passive now, systems so in the look background. look at me. Yeah, I've been saying, no, I don't like teaching online. Now I think, actually, you've just got to bring it alive, haven't you? You've got no choice. It's called buying bread and shoes for the kids. And so, the, so Elon Musk, if you're listening, Smelly Vision. We need Austrian-Indian cooking classes. We need you to invent Smelly Vision pretty quickly. <laughs> wonderful, Vanessa. Wonderful, Vanessa. Just some, what can we take away? I tell you what, from your resourcefulness this summer, and we applaud you for that, is there something that you can share with executives, managers, decision makers, parents that's of value from your experience? Yeah. So I think we need to be confident, which is not always easy for everybody at the moment. Um, but you also need to be compassionate. So be confident, you know, but when you're trying to sell something, maybe also think about, you know, it's got to be tasteful. It's got you've got to be showing caring, yeah, a yeah, caring yeah. Um, na nature towards your employees or the people you're trying to sell things to, right? And the other thing I thought about: you've got to be creative, um, but you've also got to be a bit cautious. So come up with the new ideas moving forward, but really think about whether they're actually going to be okay, or are, maybe it's you ideas you were developing before. So, for example, you know, international um, hotel managers training, maybe that's not the right thing at the moment. Be, be more cautious about what you're offering. So I think, yeah, I mean, confidence and um, creativity are great, but you've got to think about the flip side at the moment too. Mindful confidence, mindful creativity. Sounds good. Get get those get those registered as web domains by six pm. <laughs> Vanessa, mother, trainer, thwarted traveller, we send you our love and respect. Nice one. Thank you so much for being part of this series. Thank you, viewers, for for getting in touch, for your comments on social media. Much appreciated. So come back soon, Vanessa. Maybe we'll have you back on the other side of this or some other time soon. <laughs> All the best. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Cheers. Thank you. Bye.